Live from the Triangle, this is WNCN News at 11. Breaking news from the State Fair, five people injured on a ride called the Vortex. They're briefing us right now. To begin processing the scene, the ride inspector, uh, a, a ride inspector from the Department of Labor was on scene at 932. At, um, at our request, uh, because we are actually located in the county, uh, because of the resources that they have available, uh, the Wake County Sheriff's Office has uh, assumed lead in the investigation. And uh, of course, we have here with us uh, Sheriff Donnie Harrison. Um, and he is going to make a few remarks. We also have representatives from our uh, public safety office and the Department of Labor and uh, EMS here as well. Uh, I'm going to ask Sheriff Harrison um, if he would come up. I do want to say that um, this has shaken all of us a little bit, and um, we definitely have these, these folks in our thoughts and prayers tonight. And uh, I'm with that, I'm going to ask Sheriff Harrison to come up. Guys, there's not a whole lot I can tell you because you know it's preliminary, it happened so fast. Um, there were five people ranging in age from 14 uh, to 39. Uh, some of them were family members, but we don't know how the connection uh, would be yet. Uh, we have about 35, 40 people that our, our investigators and officers are talking to at this time that may have witnessed it or may have seen something that would uh, help us. Um, the preliminary is that the ride had stopped and uh, they were fixing the offload when it started off again. That's preliminary. Uh, just, I know you're going to ask that question, so that's what we have at this time. Uh, it's going to take uh, a while, quite a while, to talk to all these people. And uh, we have the ride operator and all the people that were uh, working on the ride uh, inter being interviewed at this time. One of the injury, uh, injured persons were, uh, was one of the ride operators uh, helping out at the time. Um, so, Sir, go over that one more time as to what preliminary happened. Preliminary, preliminary has told me that the ride had stopped and they were fixing the offload when the ride started off again. And like I say, that is preliminary. So. Joel, do you have anything? Any, uh, we, we are working with Department of Labor. The Department of Labor has their people here. Uh, we're treating it as a crime scene just because of the investigation, because there were injuries. Uh, but they also will be, uh, they're the ones that inspect the rides. They're the ones that will be talking with us. They're the ones that will be looking at what um, may have happened. Uh, was it a malfunction or whatever it was? The only thing I can tell you, I uh, said it was two serious injuries. That's preliminary to, um, you know, this. anytime something like this happens, you get a lot of rumors uh, that it was two in serious condition. The other three uh, were not in that bad of shape. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. Um, perhaps this is a question for you, Brian. How often are these uh, rides reviewed? Is that a daily basis? That's actually a, a question for the Labor Department to answer. Uh, that's, their, that's their jurisdiction. And that's one of the Step to the, the, the rides are to be inspected three times daily, and that is something that they will be looking at as part of the investigation. Right now, um, the local officials have control of the site. Once they turn that over to the Elevator and Amusement Device Bureau, that's some of the, one of the things they will look at to ensure that the ride did have its three daily inspections. And what are the times for that? Because we have reports of people saying they saw smoke in the day on this particular vortex ride at one point where people saw this stopped. Uh, so what are the time frames? Again, at this moment, this all has happened so fast, I don't have those types of details. As soon as I do, I'll be glad to share. But that's um, our the Bureau Chief of the Elevator and Amusement Device Bureau is over there, and as soon as they gain access to the site, they will be looking at those records, and then I will have more information to share with you. But they will be looking at the diagnostics, all the safety systems, um, and any piece of that ride to determine if it was indeed a malf malfunction of the ride. And it, so we're not going to speculate until we have a chance to look at it. 
was the last time anything like this ever happened here in the paper? I think that would be a question for uh, Chief Keith or Brian. Nothing. Um, it was, I believe, it was back in 2002. A rod operator was a rod operator was hit by the pendulum pendulum of a rod, and um, that was the last major accident at the North Carolina State Fair. In terms of the state fair, in terms of it moving forward, um, it will be business as usual tomorrow, minus this particular area? That's a good question, and I honestly don't have an answer for you right now. Um, we have been trying to gather information about what happened tonight, and uh, we will obviously, after we finish up here, be having conversations about what we do going forward with regard to that area and the rest of the fairgrounds. Um, but uh, right now, I really can't give you a definitive answer on that. Sheriff Harrison, preliminarily, um, the investigation starts now. Any idea of when you might know exactly what happened? After? No, uh, I, I can't give you a time frame because, like I say, we've got the scene locked down now to take as many pictures and do whatever we can. And, and let me say this, if we think we got most of the witnesses that was in that area, but when you guys tele, uh, televise this or put it out, if there was somebody with a cell phone or something, happened to be video, and you know they do that all the time, if they would contact us, it may be aid us in seeing what actually happened along with what we have. But going back to your question, uh, we'll do our investigation, uh, we'll turn it over to them, and then we'll all get our heads together uh, to see uh, it appears to be an accident, um, and, you know, things does happen. But like Brian said, we we hate it because this is supposed to be a fun time for the families, and like I said, I think some of these were family members, so they're certainly in our thoughts and prayers. Can, can anyone describe for us what the Vortex Live does, what it looks like? Uh, do, you, do you have any idea of, 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 of this ride and, and how people might visualize it? I know during... Uh, uh, continuing coverage of this uh, incident, we've been uh, giving people an idea of what this ride looks like, but uh, if somebody can actually piece of idea what it looks like, what, what happens on that ride, uh, that would be some questions and opportunity to see And, um, and, and Chair Harrison, when you, when you think of, of, of a night like the ride, you, you said this is a fun time for, for many families, and and what do you say to reassure families as, as we need to move forward? Well, it's, you know, accident happens. I mean, we can do everything in our power. It's just like a car accident, anything. You never know when they're going to happen. But I can assure the public just, uh, you know, my grandson will be out here tomorrow riding. That's his day. Uh, so um, we will be extremely careful. Everybody will have this on their mind. Um, and I know the ride inspectors will do uh, their due diligence to make sure everything's going. Uh, but, you know, as sad as it is, uh, we want people to come out and have fun. We, it, it'll be safe, uh, and, and we'll do everything we can to make it safe for the families that come. And the main thing is keep those uh, that got hurt tonight in, in our prayers. I know, Mrs. How, how many of the five were children? Uh, I don't know. Uh, the, the youngest one I had was told was 14, and the oldest was 39. And I'm not sure about the other ages, but um, it, it fell in between. So I think the other one was probably in their 20s. Can you or the, the Labor Department spokesperson just go into exactly the procedures that happen now as far as making sure these inspections are happening correctly? Or what do you look at to, to see what happens with this? Um, once they take control of the site, they're going to look at every piece of the ride to determine exactly, what, you know, if there was a malfunction to the ride. Um, they're going to look at the di diagnostics and all the safety systems of the ride. And, um, you know, like I said, until they do that, we I cannot speculate about exactly, you know, what happened and what went wrong with the ride. Do you know if, uh, if, if this particular ride has had issues in other fairs or cars? I, I, I do not know that at this time. I can tell you, we'll be, look, we'll be looking at all the records, um, looking back at our investigation to see if, if it's been a problem or has been a problem. 
And like she said, we don't know. It could have been, uh, it could be operator error. Uh, we don't know, and we're not going to speculate. Like she said, we want to make sure that we do our thorough investigation along with them, so we can come back and tell you guys and everybody else what happened, and we want to be accurate about it. Is there any indication of how the riders were injured, whether they were struck or thrown into the air? Or something? I, don't, I don't know the answer to that until we put it all together. What's a good share of the people who are just tuning in? Uh, give us an idea of, of the condition of the five people that you referred to. What we were told uh, was that two were serious, maybe critical, and the other ones were, um, I won't say minor injuries, but they were not as bad. And the information that we read from witnesses will determine, will let you know how these injuries occurred, whether or not they fell or hit or Right. Well, when we, like I say, we have 35, 40 people, uh, maybe more, uh, that were standing around the ride. We have the ride operators, all the, uh, the everybody that was involved with the ride, uh, plus the people that were on the ride, we have them also. So when we talk to everybody, we'll find out that common denominator of what happened. We we will look at that. That's something we've already started. Um, we'll we'll pull all that up to see if we captured anything. But at this time, uh, we haven't had time. What's the show you're asking for? Anyone who may have had cell phone video? Uh, to contact you? That's correct. If anybody, you know, a lot of times people will just take videos because of the lights and the sounds. Uh, if somebody, if someone happened to be doing that, we would like to look at it uh, because it would help us or may help us down the road. Can we get names? Um, sure. Yeah, say it's uh, like sure. person last yeah. name. Sorry. Um, Brian Long, B R I A N L O N G, with the North Carolina State Fair. Dolores Questenberry. Sorry. Um, Dolores Quessenberry, Communications Director at the North Carolina Department of Labor. D O L O R E S Q U E S E N B E R R Y. Okay. Y'all good? We appreciate you coming and we'll keep you posted. Okay, so uh, we now will uh, sort of reset here. It's 11.13. We started with the newscast and took you straight out there, but uh, we do yep. have a lot of information. Yeah, we're just uh, wrapping up from a news conference with law enforcement, a lot of solemn faces out there, uh, an official with the State Fair and a communications person with the Department of Labor. What has happened at the State Fair tonight is the unthinkable, the thing that you most want not to happen it has happened. There was some kind of misfunction, malfunction of a ride called the Vortex. We're going to be able to show you video of that. And if you're just coming into this newscast, five people were hurt when something went wrong yeah. with that ride. Now, what we do know so far is that there were five people within the ages of 14 and 39 years. Two of them are in serious condition. I want to also inform you that I spoke to an EMS source who was part of the transport process of getting these folks to the hospital. He told us that two of the people, they had to rate them on what's called a Glasgow coma scale. It basically shows how serious the injuries were. One of them initially had a GCS, or Glasgow coma scale, of 11, which is a little more serious than a concussion. One of them had a 3, and the lower the more serious. So a 3, in some cases, can be considered uh, a near coma or vegetative state. So this could be a very serious injury that we're dealing with right now at the State Fair. All of the victims were taken to Wake Med, the big Wake Med hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, the sheriff could not really tell us very much about the could not tell us very much mm -hmm. about the nature of the injuries yeah. these victims sustained, but we are getting a lot of information yeah. into the newsroom tonight, and we'd like to begin our coverage now of what we've been able to get yeah. and gather and document news-wise. Let's start with Trip Atkinson. He was actually at the fair at the time of the, of the accident. Trip, I understand either you or some of your friends were either just getting off the ride or not too far away. Can you tell us what you saw and what you heard, please? Um, yes, sir. Meanwhile, you said me and my friends had just gotten off the ride that it happened on, and we had walked over to a ride nearby, and we heard a loud bang and didn't think too much of it. And two of our buddies ran over and said people had fallen off the ride. So we ran over and went to look at it, and we saw at least three bodies laying down on the ground, and they just weren't moving at all, non-responsive. 
Okay, Trip. Uh, I understand that one of the people injured was the ride operator. Did you see that person or witness anything from that person? No, sir, I didn't. Okay, uh, Trip. We, we talked to you. I think your friend Caleb, who actually talked to me earlier, he said he told us kind of what it sounded like, and then sort of what what the feel was around the state fair after that happened. Could you tell us about that? Oh, it the sounded like it just sounded like banging metal, and then just everybody around the area was just sort of frantic. And then, but as you walked away, like other people hadn't even heard about it. They didn't even know what was going on. Tripa, uh, how soon before you began to see emergency um, medical people arrive there on the scene to administer aid, or were people who actually work for the fair uh, there to help out the victims? Well, immediately there, there were people there, like, trying to give care, and then EMS, like, ambulances, about three or four of them came there probably within the next three minutes, and they took them off on stretchers and it didn't look like they were responsive at all. You know, this is the one of the busiest days crowd-wise for the fair. It's when people can get in free bringing in a certain number of cans. Can you talk about how crowded the, the scene was? I mean, how, how were they able to manage crowd control, Trip? Um, they got fences and golf carts and they were pushing people back to get the whole area blocked off of the EMS. Trip, I want to ask you something also. You, you were just on the ride, okay? Not, not everyone has been on the Vortex. Uh, it's, it's a high-flying ride. Can you tell us sort of at its apex how high it is off the ground? Because it sounds like these five people were ejected uh, potentially from a pretty high uh, elevation. Most people, there are actually two vor rides named the Vortex. It's not the tall one that all the news are talking about. It's actually on the smaller midway okay. near the land of yesteryear. It's an orange ride. Mm -hmm. We're looking and, at it right now. And it, they were probably at least 20 feet off the ground when they fell, but I think most of the injuries came from being flung off against the wall. Trip, how old are you? I'm 17. You're 17 years old. You have never seen anything like this in your life, I would imagine. No, ma'am. So how are you coping with, with what you saw t tonight? I mean, it's, it's just unreal. I can't believe I actually saw it. Trip, we want to thank you for your time uh, and just ask you if there's anything else that you, you have to add that you saw, that you experienced, that you'd uh, be willing to share with our audience right now. That's about all I have is just can't believe it happened. Well, you take care of yourself, uh, young man, because you have really uh, been through a lot that many people could uh, conceive as being traumatizing. But we appreciate you being so clear in helping us understand what happened moments after that accident. Yes, yes ma'am. All right, so Trip Atkinson on the phone there, 17-year-old who uh, was very near the accident. Meanwhile, as we continue to gather information, and again, we've got five folks injured, two of them seriously, from a ride called the Vortex, the smaller one at the State Fair. Yeah. Pam, meanwhile, you spent some time talking to someone who'd been at the fair during the day. Yeah, I talked with a man who was near the scene of that ride. He didn't actually see the accident, but Ken Vrana told me he did see the ride operator having one heck of a time locking down the safety bars on the Vortex. Well, we were out, my wife and I were out at the fair uh, taking some photographs and just happened to be in front of that particular ride and I was waiting for them to start the ride so I could get some action stuff. And it's a little bit unusual ride in terms of the way they have to lock people in with one of these bars. And they kept messing with the bars and messing with them and they couldn't seem to get the thing to lock down. And I got a little bit bored of waiting because I didn't, you know, we, we were going to move on. And they still ultimately could not get them to lock down, but they started running that ride and they ran it from 845 until the accident. So they knew there was a problem with that ride. There he is. He says uh, they had to have known there was a problem with that ride. This investigation, this investigation is really just getting started. The sheriff said that. So the story we we hear it, it may keep changing, uh, but and, and witnesses' statements could could very well change between now and in the morning. Uh, but we want to talk to somebody who's right there on the scene. Yeah, uh, Derek Waller from our uh, reporting team is out there. He has been for several hours. Uh, he is on a uh, a live view, which is a Wi-Fi connection. So there may be a bit of a delay, but Derek, if you can tell us what you're seeing right now. Well, Ben and Pam, obviously we've been in this uh, room for the last few minutes for this press conference. Uh, a tragic evening here at the State Fair, as you've reported, five injured, uh, two could seriously. We talked to Brian Long earlier, you know, who's a State Fair spokesperson. He told us this has shaken 
all of us. And I want to toss to some video that we actually shot on our cell phone a little while ago as we were just arriving on the scene a little while ago uh, when this accident first happened. We saw uh, several EMS and fire trucks racing down the road to this, uh, uh, presumably to this scene. Ages of the victims are 14 to 39. Uh, and again, an absolutely a tragic scene. I want to toss to a soundbite that we got of uh, a parking attendant who was just across the street from this and listen to what he heard. Take a listen. It just sounded like a bunch of stuff hitting metal. And that was it. And then uh, there was no screaming. I didn't hear any screaming and nothing out of the normal on that end. But then all of a sudden we had all of the ambulance and state trooper activity after that. There you go. And where do we go from this? Well, officials tonight telling us that they are going to be looking through all of the diagnostic information, all of the records for these inspections on this ride to find out what exactly happened here, whether this was a malfunction or human error. Also, we heard from uh, Sheriff Donnie Harrison tonight who said that, you know, he does believe this is an accident and that he believes that the state fair is safe. In fact, he says he will be bringing his grandson here tomorrow. Uh, again, a tragic evening here at the state fair, but certainly a lot of unanswered questions about what exactly happened. I'm live at the State Fair. I'm Derek Waller, WNCN News. I'll send it back to you. All right, Derek, thank you for all that information. And just to recap one more time, an injury at the Vortex ride in the old Midway. It's the yellow ride. Uh, some reports saying it could have been as high as 20 feet above the ground. Five people injured, two of them in serious condition, we believe, at this point. The ages ranging from 14 to 39 years old. And again, as Derek alluded to, it doesn't appear that this accident is going to shut down the State Fair. We know it is a huge moneymaker for our state, and he said he wants families to still come out and have fun. Granted, that could change between now and then, but as far as we're able to determine right here and right now, the fair will continue to operate as usual tomorrow, and we're coming right back after this. And now your forecast with Chief Meteorologist Wes Hohenstein. All right, we're going to take a quick break for weather so we can get out and enjoy the rest of the State Fair. Then we'll get back to the breaking news that happened there tonight. But it has been a chilly night. We look at the radar first because there is some rain and snow up in our mountains and in the Virginia mountains. That is not coming here. What we will see from this, maybe a few sprinkles overnight. You have to remember how dry our atmosphere is. So it may look like a lot, but a lot of that is evaporating before it reaches the ground. So maybe some sprinkles overnight, but as you head out the door on Friday morning, it will be dry. Clouds will be clearing and it will be 39 degrees. Now I say that's not as cold as what we had this morning when we had mid to even lower 30s, but it is still cold. So bundle up. It'll be sunny throughout the day, but it will remain in the 50s all day. Tomorrow is going to be our coldest day of the week. 57 will be our high. That's going to happen about three and tomorrow night, whether it's the state fair or Friday night football will be our coldest night. Very very quickly falling through the 40s, so make sure you're dressed for that. Out there right now, many of us are in the 40s. In fact, already dropping down to 36 in the far northwestern corner of our viewing area. So a chilly night that isn't going to be as cold as last night because of this cloud cover. Remember, overnight cloud cover acts like a blanket, so not as cold as last night because of the cloud cover. We'll have those sprinkles as we're waiting on yet another cold front to come through, and this is the one that will bring us our coldest day tomorrow and freezing temperatures by Saturday morning. So out the door on Friday morning, these are the numbers you're going to run into about three or four degrees warmer than what we had today. So I doubt a noticeable difference. Still chilly outside. Then during the day we have mostly sunny skies with a high of 57. Again, our coldest day this week and on the seven day going forward. But it's Friday night into Saturday morning that we will see temperatures below 32 degrees. So a freeze watch in effect now for Saturday morning because of freezing temperatures that will eventually become a freeze warning. So we will see temperatures in the 50s the next couple of days, guys. 65 on Sunday looks to be the pick day of the weekend and then we'll race toward 70 by next Wednesday and Thursday. Weather right now for Halloween, which is a week from tonight, looks very nice. That's good news. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to come back with more news and updates on that tragedy at the State Fair coming up.